Massachusetts was one of the last of the Treaty Battleship series. She's of the South Dakota class. And these were fairly balanced ships in terms of armament, armor, and speed performance, which could be created within the treaty limits. The outbreak of World War II gave a powerful boost to the development of shipbuilding in the United States. Dockyards received orders to build new ships featuring high speed, better armament, stronger armor, and improved maneuverability in order to gain superiority in the naval theater of war. However, before the war kicked off, they had already laid down ships of the so-called Washington era. These two ships, developed while abiding by treaty restrictions, were a result of numerous compromises and certainly weren't as advanced as the latest projects. But since World War II was happening, the shipyard had to finish their construction and do it as quickly as possible. Massachusetts was built really fast. Just 34 months after the keel-laying ceremony, the battleship was commissioned. Specifications. Length, 207.5 meters. Beam, 33 meters. Draft, almost 9 meters. Total displacement, 45,216 tons. The main power plant was arranged in echelons across four compartments, each having two Babcock and Wilcox boilers and a set of General Electric geared turbines. Power, 135,000 HP. Armor, main armor belt, 310 millimeters. Main armor deck, from 146 to 154 millimeters. The armor on the turrets was 184 to 457 millimeters thick. Conning tower, from 102 to 406 millimeters. Armament. The primary armament consisted of nine Mark VI guns placed in three triple turrets. Caliber, 406 millimeters. Dual purpose artillery. 10 coaxial Mark 12 guns, caliber 127 millimeters. Small caliber anti-aircraft artillery, six quadruple Bofors guns, caliber 40 millimeters. 35 single Orlikon auto cannons, caliber 20 millimeters. Air group, three Vought OS-2U Kingfisher aircraft. Cruising range, 15,000 miles at 15 knots. At that time, the indirect approach had already become a dominating military strategy in Western countries, specifically in the USA and Great Britain. Its main idea is that you shouldn't attack a powerful enemy head-on, but sort of act on the flanks, on the periphery, to exhaust its economy, exhaust its armed forces. Morocco was part of the French colonial system. Vichy France had its forces stationed there. And so our hero, battleship Massachusetts, took part in these battles near Casablanca. One of the most important strategic objectives was Casablanca where there was both a major seaport and an airbase. Moreover, at the quay in the port of Casablanca was the French battleship Jean Bart. Although she was unfinished, she still had a combat-capable quad 15-inch gun turret. The city itself was also a hard nut to crack. There were several coastal batteries, which pretty firmly protected both the entrance of the port and about 20 miles of surrounding coastal waters. To neutralize these forces and for the naval gunfire support at landing, you had a significant force headed by Massachusetts, which was sent to the Moroccan coast. Ships maneuvered all night off the coast, waiting for the operation to start. On November the 8th at 6.30 a.m., the ships assumed a combat formation and headed for Casablanca. Soon, they were detected. The El Henk battery was the first to open fire at the U.S. naval force. Jean Bau's artillery immediately joined the gunfire. The very first of her shells raised huge columns of water near the American ships. The cruisers didn't wait long and opened fire at the harbor of Casablanca, where the French battleship was berthed. 
Along with the Allied cruisers, Massachusetts finally fired her first shots from her 406 mm guns. Within a short period of time, the American battleship fired nine salvos at Jean Bart and made five hits. And the shells that missed the French battleship continued on to ruin port facilities and sink transport vessels in the harbor. The attacking force got so carried away, engaging Jean Bart, that they forgot about their primary task, to block enemy ships and prevent them from leaving the port. The commander of the French 2nd Light Squadron noticed this mistake. He led his ships out to sea and headed eastward to the landing zone of American troops. The French squadron began to exchange fire with the U.S. destroyers that were escorting the landing craft. The Massachusetts group redirected their guns to the new enemy force. At 9.18 a.m., the battleship opened fire and immediately hit destroyer Fugger. In the heat of the battle, a 194mm projectile fired by the El Hank battery hit Massachusetts on the bow. It struck the main deck's port side. Five minutes later, the battleship noticed four incoming torpedoes, just in time to dodge them. One torpedo passed by just five meters away from her starboard side. By noon, the battle was gradually reaching its final stage. With just one shot, Massachusetts knocked out destroyer leader Milan, and a few minutes later, the battleship hit another French destroyer. The first combat outing for Massachusetts was pretty successful. Battleship Jean Bart was neutralized. Other enemy ships and coastal batteries were disabled, and all this was done in just five hours. In that operation, Massachusetts fired off almost all 800 of her armor-piercing shells at the enemy. They inflicted significant damage on Jean Bar, and a fragment of one of those shells, which hit the French battleship, is kept aboard Massachusetts today as a museum exhibit item. All in all, the landing operation in Morocco and Algiers was a success. The separate French units that resisted the Allies were suppressed by naval artillery and aviation. By November the 11th, 1942, not a single gun could be heard firing on the northern coast of Africa. The landing of 100,000 troops on the coast of Algiers and Morocco kicked off a large-scale offensive operation against Italian-German forces in northern Africa, which ended in victory for the Allies in May 1943. From the coast of Africa, battleship Massachusetts sailed back home. For several months, she underwent repairs and upgrades in Boston. The shipyard reinforced the battleship's anti-aircraft armament and updated her radar systems. In February 1943, Massachusetts passed through the Panama Canal into the Pacific to take part in fierce battles between the Allied forces and the Imperial Japanese Navy. You see, Massachusetts participated in the war both in the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. She was redeployed back and forth over the course of World War II. Was she lucky? Well, she traveled from one theater of war to another. I cannot say the crew were lucky, as they had to suffer all these hardships. But in terms of the ship's combat career, her battle history, yes, she was. Massachusetts fought both in the Atlantic and the Pacific. Massachusetts' battle history in the Pacific campaign began at the southwest part, New Caledonia. For month after month, the battleship, along with the main forces, advanced to the north, covering the landing of troops, escorting convoys, firing upon coastal positions. Names like the Solomon Islands, the Gilbert Archipelago, Nauru Island, Tavoa, and Kwajalein Atolls. All these places were not deprived of the attention of the battleship's main battery. In November 1944, Massachusetts participated in the Battle of Leyte Gulf, after which the Imperial Japanese Navy lost the capability to engage in significant offensive combat operations. Then in the spring of 1945, you had Iwo Jima and Okinawa, 
By the summer, Massachusetts had approached the Japanese home islands and was firing at industrial centers where military factories were concentrated. On August 9, 1945, the battleship fired her main battery at the metallurgical plants in Kamaiichi. These were the last salvos of 16-inch gunfire of World War II. Thus, Massachusetts became known for having fired both the first and the last shots from American 16-inch guns in that war. During her service in the war, the battleship covered 225,000 miles, fought 35 battles, sank five enemy ships, and shot down 18 airplanes. For her combat merits, Massachusetts was decorated with 11 battle stars. In 1947, the ship was mothballed and assigned to the reserve. In the early 60s, the battleship was stricken from the naval vessel register, and her fortune was determined by the citizens of Massachusetts. They had warm feelings for Big Mamie.